Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone is doing well this weekend. It's spring, finally. It's starting to warm up a little bit. Of course, here in New England, we're in for quite a cold snap on Monday, so yikes. Um, that reminds me, Monday uh, members at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, we have the book club. And I know that I have some more new members. Always go to the community tab. That's where all the details are for you. And then at 8 p.m. for all members is the live raw channeling. And I channeled the raw collective this morning and asking if when I channel on Monday, can we get into this whole war issue, the nature of war, why we go to war, why in third density we're so warlike. And because I know a lot of you have been asking me that, like, what is the purpose of all this? What's the point? And what can we do about it? So that's going to be the topic on Monday. Um, and also, too, I thought I made it clear, but I had somebody ask about this. So new videos, the new um, classes, like so right now we're doing working with your angel classes. Those are coming out on Saturday now, not Fridays, because I no longer do readings on Saturdays. I really did cut back quite a bit. Um uh, the readings because it was just getting to be too much I, I just was getting burnt out and so the new videos come out on Saturday not that it really matters because they're not live they, they just go straight into a playlist you get notified through the community tab and in your email and that sort of thing but um, just yeah to clear up any confusion so in this video we're going to look at a few things so I saw that some of you were asking me about China's relationship with Russia we'll take a peek at that um, what Putin's going to do next, because this whole thing isn't working out for him, is it? It's not going the way he had planned. So we're going to look at that. Um, we just recently found out that Don Jr. and Eric are going to be testifying. So we'll take a sneak peek at that, see what that holds for all of us. Um, that should be interesting to watch, I think, because they, unless they completely, you know, do the whole pleading the fifth thing, which we'll have to see, right? Um, Paul Manafort tried getting onto a plane to Dubai um, with without a valid passport. So that obviously isn't going to work. Um, also, too, looking at Clarence Thomas um, and his wife, Virginia, I think that's something that we need to take a look at because I think that's becoming serious. And will Biden have another seat to fill? I'm thinking yes. I, I am. I am thinking yes. And I know you could say, well, you know, Clarence Thomas is not his wife. Make that argument. But at the same time, this really isn't okay what happened, right? So let's get into it. We will start with Clarence Thomas and his wife, Virginia. If you don't know, um, she had texted one of 45's aides, uh, Mark Meadows, asking him to overturn the election. The January 6th committee has these texts. So there's no going back. She can't say that she wasn't part of the insurrection. I mean, they have physical evidence. Uh, it's obviously not going well for her. So let's see what is going to happen to him because he's the one that really impacts us more, I think. And he's the one that would lead Biden to having another seat to fill. So let's take a look at what's going on with um, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Yeah, I don't, you know, his energy isn't good. I don't think that this is going to go well for him. I think it's pretty rare to remove or impeach somebody that's on the Supreme Court, but um, I think this case may warrant that. Okay. Okay, so they're thinking about it. They're coming up with plots and plans and strategies, and um, they're assessing the situation. So the powers that be are assessing the situation. They're trying to figure things out. Uh, the obstacle, there is some money behind him. There is some true cash going on that is trying to keep him there. Big surprise. However, here he is in a legal battle. This is my card for a legal battle because the Page of Swords is holding what? The Sword of Truth. You know, all these swords in the tarot deck are double-sided for a reason. They show that they're balanced, ethical, moral. Um, they see both sides of the issue. So he has this um, issue coming up that's going to cause him to have legal issues. 
here he is trying to persevere. He feels like this character, like, oh my gosh, like I have this bandage around my head. I'm just trying to make it through one day to the next, um, which is what I get when I go into his energy. This is not a happy man. And then we get a very official governmental type card. You know, this is a very, um, the Hierophant is very uh, traditional. He is a conformist. He likes to do things by the book. And while Clarence Thomas's wife really didn't do that, did she? So this is bringing about a lot of awkwardness. Um, I think he could be leaving. You know, here his back is turned. You know, there's only three cards where the character's back is turned and they're going. Um, also, too, you know, I know the other meaning of this card is waiting for one's ship to come in. But when I look at the next card, the death card. Now, I don't think it means that he's going to die. I think he's fine. I know he was hospitalized, but I mean, everybody gets a little sick and gets infections and things like that. But um, I think that this is not going to go the way he's hoping. So stay tuned for that, folks. So looking at China and Russia's relationship, I don't think Vladimir is getting out of it what he had hoped. But I think, too, Xi Jinping is looking at this like, okay, um, Putin, like, literally united all of his enemies, right? Got pretty much the whole world against him. Does China really want to take the economic loss that Russia took? You know, what's in this for them? And, you know, Russia does not have a lot of money. It's, it's a very poor country. And when you look at their military budget, it's almost non-existent. I mean, it's very small, right? Um, especially if you compare it to like the U.S. And I'm not saying that it's right because we do it at such a cost, don't we? We don't have health insurance. We don't have a lot of safety nets that the other countries have. But at the same time, which is always what I have to say, which makes me laugh, because whenever people see a UFO, what do they always say? Knee-jerk response. It's Russia. At least now we can see in real time that they actually don't have that equipment and they don't have that technology because they don't have that budget, which is what I've been saying. It really isn't them. If you want to blame the U.S. for some of those UFOs, I think that's legit. But to blame Russia for it, um, I, I don't... Mm. So let me pull some cards on China and Russia. their relationship. So what do we need to know, Spirit? I feel like it's pretty much, like there's almost like no energy for me to read. Like it's pretty much done with. Um, do I think, you know, China may buy some oil from Russia? Sure. I think they might do something like that. Uh, but anything more significant? I'm not feeling it. Here's China looking at the whole world <laughs> saying, Ugh, you know what, you just united everybody against you. Um, and you know what, and maybe, who knows, with the demise of Putin, this could lead to a new phase or a new cycle for China. This could actually be a good thing for them, which may not be a good thing for the rest of us, of course, but it could be a good thing for them. I think this is all China's point of view. Um, the obstacle is stress, worry, anxiety, and that's exactly what I was picking up on. Um, and there's a tower moment. And I think that tower moment is coming straight for Russia. I don't think, you know, there's any way out for Putin. I really don't. Uh, I think there's going to be this tower moment. Why? Because he's disillusioned. And I think he's disillusioned about the relationship that he had with China. I don't think it's what he was hoping for. And it leads to brokenheartedness, heartache, heartbreak. So I don't think it's what he was hoping. So I, I don't see that relationship growing and being nurtured and evolving. But like I said, they may do some little things here and there, but nothing that's going to really affect the outcome in, in the long, you know, in the long term. So I think we should look at um, what Putin is going to do next. You know, is he going to fold? Because 40,000 Russian soldiers have either been killed or they've been captured or they're injured. So that's a lot. That's a significant amount of his military. 
Uh, we've seen his lack of resources. I mean, the food that he sent them with was expired from 2015, not sending them with enough gas, all that sort of thing. Plus having soldiers that most of them really didn't want to fight to begin with. You know, they were told that they were going into one situation and they get over there and it's completely different. Um, I think he wants a way out with saving face because he is very proud. He's very arrogant. He's egotistical. Um, he, he's a very proud man. So how does he just bow out of this? I, I don't see a gentle way of doing it, nor do I think the world is necessarily going to allow for that either. And so this is why I think maybe in the future, I just keep seeing him sort of just gone, disappearing. He's no longer around. So let's take a peek here. So Putin in the future. What do we need to know? Okay. Well, he starts first by, you know, trying to survey things. You know, here he is holding the world in his hand, trying to figure things out. Like, okay, where do I go next? What do I do next? Um, just trying to sort things out. And, you know, when you look at the wands, the reason that this wand isn't planted in the ground is because nothing's been decided yet. So he doesn't even know what he's going to do next. Okay. His obstacle is, first of all, this is one of my cards for the U.S. And nextly, uh, this is a card of wishes and dreams coming true, which is great unless it shows up in the obstacle position. So this shows, okay, wishes and dreams not coming true. So all those plans that he had had, all those hopes and dreams, it's not coming into fruition. Why? Because he's going into judgment. You know, here's the judgment card. He is going to be judged. So I think, if, and I think if he will be judged if he decides to stick around. You know, like I said, he is ex-KGB. I think he does have a little pill in his pocket if necessary you know, sort of like a Hitler type deal where you're not necessarily willing to um, go through with their judgment, but there would be judgment. And the card of retreat, pulling back. Um, this is a very quiet card, you know, and if you pair it with the judgment card, not very favorable, you know, because this card can turn pretty sour depending upon, and this is the Four of Swords, um, can turn pretty sour depending upon what cards it gets paired with. So obviously not great, okay? Another legal judicial type card, King of Swords. So, you know, and what's this character holding? The Sword of Truth. So now mind you, none of these cards are talking about him really pulling through with all of this, advancing, uh, moving forward. These cards are more about there's some stuff really coming for him that he's not going to enjoy. Um, he is going to be judged. He's trying to figure things out and, you know, oh geez. And then at the bottom of the deck, when I look at the bottom of the deck, here we go. How many times do we get this card, right? Here's our little Russian friend stealing five of the seven swords, looking behind him like, oh, I'm going to try to get away with it. But because of all the legal cards, we know that he's not. So no surprise that we got that card, right? Let me just mix these up. I thought it was really nice. I don't know if everyone saw it, but um, Biden had had pizza with our troops in Poland yesterday and, you know, went over there and gave them like a nice talk and, um, you know, showed his support. I wanted to take a look at Mitch McConnell and I'll tell you why. Because ever since the State of the Union address, I have just been feeling something about him. I mean, first of all, the look on his face during the State of the Union was unbelievable, right? I mean, his whole face was like so far down. I mean, the man, I mean, if you went into his, in, into his energy, my God, like the energy was just so like downtrodden. Like he knew something that we didn't. He knew something that we didn't. And the thing is, I really think he's going to be disgraced or dishonored or like he knows something is coming that just is 
bad for him. <laughs> not bad for us, but just really negative for him. Um, I want to take a look at him. What is going on with Mitch? Because it's just not normal for anyone's energy to be that low. Because that was bad. What do we need to know, Spirit, about Mitch McConnell? What do we need to know? Ah, see, and I keep picking up fear. I keep getting fear in his energy. Okay, so money. So we know that this has something to do with money. So we'll be hearing about some sort of dealing that he had with finances. Okay, that's what's at the heart of this matter. His obstacle. He didn't know when to pull back. He didn't know when to retreat, to go into hiding, to knock it off. He wanted his cake and to eat it too. And he didn't. He kept pushing forward. So very interesting. Um, he does get a legal judicial type card. Uh, so that makes me think like, okay, there's some sort of judgment coming for him. There's some sort of legal case. And it's, oh, see, and it's causing all kinds. And this is what we saw, isn't it? Isn't this what we saw at the State of the Union address? We saw, you know, a man that was having sleepless nights, a man that was stressed out, that was worried, that didn't know what to do next, um, that just had fear. And then we get another card that is governmental, okay, the Hierophant. And once again, just like I was saying before with Clarence Thomas, um, you know, it's great when, you know, this card comes up normally under most circumstances, but Mitch did something that was not traditional and conforming. And that's not good when you're in the government. There's going to be a drastic change. So, you know, here's the, um, I know there's a glare, uh, but if I don't have some light coming at me, you'll never see me because this room is dark. I, I talk about that in my Be A YouTuber video because every YouTuber has a challenge. Mine is always lighting. So um, there's a drastic change coming and then we get the death card. Once again, I don't think it's literal. I don't think it's, you know, a physical death, but um, I think the way he's lived his life, maybe his political career, something is very much over. So I, I don't feel positive about what's coming for him. So Eric and Don Jr. Oh my goodness. Okay. So first of all, I really think they're not happy that they're not the first family anymore. Okay. I think they really enjoyed and relished those privileges and now they're gone. And so now they're going to have to sit for a deposition in May because they are being held accountable by all these families that they are being accused of conning into bad investments. Uh, 45 is going to have to sit for deposition in June, the next month. So let's see what is going to happen with Eric and Don Jr. What do we need to know? Interesting. I get a mix of um, fear with like smarminess. Um, like, oh, whatever, you know, but like deep down, they're like scared. But on the surface, very arrogant. Like, oh, I'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Um, we're good. Because we've gotten out of everything before. We've never been held accountable. And so these families aren't going anywhere. Okay. So first of all... <laughs> They really just want to go to smoother waters. They want to run away and just get into their little boat and paddle. Um, but there's no escaping this. Just like there's not going to be any escaping all the further lawsuits that are coming. Which is why I say when you guys worry about 45 becoming president again, are you serious? Like, there are so many lawsuits coming. Are you telling me he's going to get out of each and every one? Especially the more serious ones. Uh, I mean, not that this isn't serious for those families. You know, this is, I'm sure, devastating for those families. But 
Yeah, so they just want to get into their little boat and paddle away. The obstacle is, you know, Ace of Wands. Um, the meaning of this card is a fertile new beginning. So it's the obstacle in this case. There is no fertile new beginning. Um, it's more like it's reversed, right? So this is more like an ending. They, they want a new beginning. Um, and where it's wands, you know, wands do talk about business and, um, you know, business, entrepreneurism, uh, finances, that sort of thing. And it is indeed going to court. It is. Um, we get the emperor here. They're going to stand judgment. Why? Because, well, this is one of my cards for 45. And so, you know, their dad is at the heart of this matter. But also, other re oh, this is interesting. I'm getting all kinds of cards about relationships. So the Lover's card and the Knight of Cups. So that tells me this has a lot to do with relationships that they have formed. That's what's at the heart of this matter. And that's what they're going to be tried on. And you may find out that they had dealings with unscrupulous people um, outside of, you know, the Trump Corporation. Um, and I think that because that's what's at the heart of the matter. And I'll finish up with the high priestess here, uh, hidden motives, secret agendas. So things that weren't brought up in, you know, to the light of day, they're now going to be coming to light. All these things that they had, all these relationships that, that had to do with money are coming into light. So yeah, that's why I think, you know, they just want to get into that boat and paddle away. But, um, there is no going anywhere. Even if they were to escape this one, all the other ones are still sitting there. So Paul Manafort, his passport was revoked. Um, and he was just removed from a plane heading to Dubai. Um, if you're not familiar with him, he was um, 45's campaign chairman. Uh, 45 pardoned him. Now, when I was first thinking like, oh, I wonder why he's going to Dubai. And I just heard like a little voice say, where are there so many Russian oligarchs? They're in Dubai, right? They love Dubai. And so I think that there is that Russian connection. Uh, I think we're right back to that again with him. And so let's take a look at what's going on with um, Manafort. Because it's not like, say, he was pulling a Ted Cruz and he was trying to go to Cancun, right? Um, no, he wanted to go to Dubai. And he was willing to risk it all, knowing that he had, you know, a revoked passport, which is an odd thing to do. And he was pulled off the plane by um, the Miami authorities. Annie's doing well, by the way. She is snuggled up in front of me. She's learned how to tuck herself in. It's adorable. At the age of 15. Oh, a card flew. At the age of 15, she's learned how to tuck herself in. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay, so the card that actually flew out is the death card. So his way of living is over. You know, him being able to jump on a plane and just go here and there and make deals and, you know, a wheel and deal, which I think he did a lot of. Those days are sort of over, I think. Um, what's that, the obstacle? Well, this is a card of being happy because you reached a milestone. So I think he's going to have a very difficult time reaching any new milestones. Um, I think he's going to have a hard time just functioning because, well... You know, he is restricted, isn't he? And he's, but he's restricted for a reason. Um, delusional. You know, seven of cups. The things inside of these cups are not real. There's castles, fairies, ghosts, baubles. It's just a bunch of mayhem. And so he was very disillusioned, which makes me a little bit concerned about him. Like, if you know that your passport isn't good, why would you try doing it anyways? He is trying to persevere. He is trying to um figure out a way to exist with this new life and i i don't think he's coping well and it's interesting because the next two cards are both twos you know and twos are talking about like the beginning of a journey at a crossroads trying to figure things out trying to make decisions holding the world in his hand a world that he can't travel any longer um and trying to figure out well what do i do next 
But you know what though? He is in for him to fix his passport and to get this straightened out. He's in for a ruthless battle. Why? Because he abused his power. So now he's looking back like this character and asking, was it worth it? Now that I'm stuck in this country and I can't move about the world like I used to, I don't think it was worth it. So let's finish up. I will do, um, make sure I got the right cards here. Yes, I do. I will do a four card pull. Instead of three, I'm doing four. And I'll tell you why when I get to it. Um, but let's finish up with doing, will Biden be filling another SCOTUS seat? I am leaning towards a yes on that one. I, I think so. Um, I, I don't feel great about Clarence Thomas. Um, but let's see. Let's take a look. Okay. Interesting. I mean, the cards are very interesting. Uh, Ten of Pentacles. So there's going to be a lot of money at stake here. So there's going to be a lot of people that really fight this. You don't get more golden coins on a card than this one. Okay. Uh, and I think it's because, you know, like this is a generational card, right? And, you know, because Supreme Court justices are there for such a long period of time, especially where we're picking younger ones. And so this will affect generations. This will make a big impact. So you're going to have those that fight it. Um, they don't want him to be building new relationships. Uh, so this tells me he's going to meet a lot of opposition. Wow, I look at the cards. He's in for a fight with this. So this is not going to be easy um, because, you know, when this knight's at his best, he's the knight in shining armor and the cup is upright and it's full with opportunities. And that's what the obstacle is. Um, oh, yes, yeah, he, he's getting all fighting, fighting cards. Um, Biden's going to have a heck of a time doing it. He's on top of the hill all by himself. Why? Because everybody has differing ideas, different beliefs, different values, different morals. They're not coming eye to eye. Why? Because there's hidden agendas, secret motives, things that we don't know anything about. And so, but here, here he goes though. He's still going to push forward. So there is still some momentum to go forward with all of this. So it may take a bit longer than what one may hope, but at the same time, there's going to be progress. So I, I think he eventually will, but I, I don't, yeah, the cards are saying he's meeting a lot of opposition. Oh my goodness. So, all right, let's finish up with the four card pull. Two of these are Shamuels and two of these are um, Joe Fael cards. And the reason I did that is because for my angel members, I just channeled Shamuel. And next month in April, I'm channeling Joe Fael. And, um, you know, she's a wonderful angel that has the ability to beautify your thoughts, beautify your surroundings. She can help you to live a better life. And she's wonderful for anyone who suffers from depression, anxiety, any sort of dark thoughts that need to be uplifted she's wonderful for that. And so I think it's really important that we listen to her messages. Um, just like Shamuel is very much into world peace and love and um, finding your life purpose and things like that. So take a moment to center yourself. I'll try to spread these out really good here. And just take a deep breath. And without thinking, just which one are you drawn to? One, two, three or four. One, two, three or four. Here we go. Card one is Archangel Shamuel, change your life. And this is Radley Valentine's um, deck, which we're also doing his book on Monday. And it says, a sudden revelation that offers freedom. Break free of procrastination. Embrace the opportunities that change brings. 
So yeah, you're getting ready to change your life. So don't resist it. Try to go with the flow, embrace those new opportunities uh, because they're going to lead to a greater freedom. Card number two is also Archangel Shamuel. And this is the card of perspective. And it says, there's a better way. Pause for reflection and insight. Dare to be different. So you don't have to conform. You don't have to do what's expected of you or what's traditional. Um, but take that moment of reflection. Meditate on it. Pray on it. Um, be, you know, insightful as you go through this. Okay. Number three is Archangel Jophiel, which is also the star card. And it says, a dream come true. Well, it's a star card, right? Like when you wish upon a star. Believe in yourself, the end of a difficult situation. So if you've been really burdened with something, there's something that's been weighing you down, a tough situation that's just been hanging on, this card is saying you're going into a new phase of your life. And then number four is also Archangel Jophiel, and it's the decision card. And it says, release yourself from that which holds you back. A need to detox. And like I've been saying, when I've been getting this thing about detoxing with the clients that I work with so much, um, it's not usually, sometimes it is a chemical detox. Sometimes it is like needing to eat and drink better, that sort of thing. But I've been finding a lot of it is a need to be with people that are for your highest good. Don't be with toxic people. Don't be in toxic situations. Purge that from your life. Unnecessary worry based on a lack of self-confidence. So if you're having self-confidence issues, that's your solar plexus chakra, right? Open it up. Work on it. Wear yellow. Um, you know, self-confidence is important. That's your self-esteem, your self-worth, your ego, all that sort of thing. So I hope this video was helpful. It was a pleasure making it. Please like, subscribe, look at the membership. Um, you can get a reading at dianaquarius.com, but I am booked quite a ways out. And I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. And if you're in this area, stay warm on Monday. Bye, everyone.